the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. For granting us the grace to take the influence of the kingdom to borders beyond this local environment. It's a privilege and we thank you. Lord, we pray that the fruits will abide in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, can you help me with this fan? Please. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord for the privilege. We are to start a series tonight um, but I may suspend it for next week. It's supposed to be a very powerful series. I know how prepared we have been. But the Lord just put something in my heart. Um, in fact, I was about to send some materials for printing that I'll be using tonight. Um, and the Lord just put something very important in my heart that I think would be a preamble to this series. And I trust that God will bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Second Timothy chapter 3. Pick up your Bibles. And let's look at the word of God. I love the word of God. Because it is the only instrument that can help me understand the ways of God. The Bible is a very interesting book, unlike novels or many other books that have been written by religious founders and people who have documented their convictions. The Bible is able to convey to any man the realities of the spirit, the very mind of God. Second Timothy chapter 3. It's good to see everyone. I'll read just two verses and then we'll teach. Verse 16. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. If you're there, say Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. This is Paul writing to his spiritual son, Timothy. It was at a time when he was admonishing him. Theologically speaking, Timothy was a very young man. And he happened to be the bishop. It was a name for an overseer. He had responsibility of building and maturing the saints that were committed unto him. And so once and again, Paul would write to him on different aspects of um, leadership church administration and so on and so forth and this was one of those uh, times so he was writing to him and he told him something he said all scripture is given by inspiration of god then the bible says and is profitable everyone says scripture is profitable please say it again scripture is profitable anything the Bible tells you is profitable, I think you should pay attention to. Hallelujah. Yeah. There are many things in our lives we consider to be profitable. And so we spend time, we spend resources. Um, for instance, being gainfully employed is profitable. So we rejoice whenever we find out that someone is gainfully employed. We are happy. Right? We consider marriage to be profitable having children is profitable so when a woman um, gets pregnant or delivers a child we all celebrate there are things in our lives that are profitable and here paul is telling his son in the gospel he's saying look 
all scripture is given by inspiration of God is a and is profitable. Number one for doctrine. Number two for reproof. Number three for correction. Number four for instruction in righteousness. Next verse. To the end that whoever commits himself to them, he says that the man of God may be what? The word perfect there is the word mature. That the man of God may be mature. Thoroughly furnished. I like that. Not just furnished. He said thoroughly furnished unto how many? All good works. Please listen to me. We all want to see results in our lives. We all want to be mightily used by God in different areas. It's been the cry of people. That's why many of us are gathered here, trusting that we'll learn of the ways of God. And here the apostle is saying that scripture is able to make a man of God mature. Then is able to make him thoroughly furnished. He uses a language that is used in, in, in furniture work. When you know how furniture is, the finishing you put on it, you, you file it, you polish it, and it looks beautiful. It says thoroughly furnished. So you come to a point where the degree of inaccuracy in your life is minimal. So minimal, anyone can trust you. Your voice can be taken as the voice of God. That's what it means to be thoroughly furnished. Such that when you communicate truths to people, they don't have to be under pressure to run around trying to verify because they have been able to gain confidence in your furnishing. They have come to a point where they understand that anything that leaves your mouth has been thoroughly edited. Your alignment to the spirit is so strong that your communications will have minimal correction and so their hearts are open to receive then he says that the man of god may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works unto the healing ministry unto delivering people unto saving people right acts 10 38 says how um, god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power the bible says he went about doing what good see that so when the bible talks of good works anything that is able to reproduce the victory the life the power the love the might of god is considered to be good works good works are not ambitions when the bible talks about good works it's not talking about your ambition everything that you commit yourself to under christ that is capable of revealing the multifaceted dimensions of God is called good works. So if on the strength of my staying with the word of God, I access the mysteries that can ease men of pain and bring the healing power of Jesus unto them, that is able to furnish me unto that good work. Right? It is very, very important. Please listen to me. God has been giving me some profound revelations. It's as though I've never read the Bible all my life. Sometimes I just open the Bible and I just lie down and I don't even know what because it looks like every verse I could dwell there forever. There's something about illumination. I want to teach you something very profound tonight that will really bless you. Illumination um is, is, is similar to the word enlightenment. Whenever we talk about illumination, access to light, access to knowledge, access to information, we have in our society those we call the elite or those who have illumination. We mean that they have been able to educate their minds. They have been able to train and program their minds to think and function in a particular dimension and they have to an extent been able to drive ignorance are we together now and so we call them the enlightened ones even in the world they have groups and cults that they call illuminati and and those people 
Pastor, is that you? God bless you. I'd like us to bless him. Great man of God, all the way from Kaduna. Thank you. Please, can you stand up? Let's honor you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to see you. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're to have a great meeting in his church, and um, we couldn't make it, but um, we're coming. We're coming loaded, and we'll bless the whole church. God bless you, sir. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. Ignorance is dangerous. Ignorance is destructive. The strength of darkness is ignorance. The strength of darkness in the life of a man, in the life of a pastor, in the life of a leader is ignorance. What is ignorance? Absence of light. Absence of strategy. Absence of illumination. Absence of understanding. Say amen. There is so much ignorance in the body we have to contend with God's light to drive away this darkness. Otherwise, the days that are coming will, um, will embarrass us very seriously. The days that are coming now are separating the church into very two clear lines. It's either you know what you are doing or you don't know what you are doing. The disciples kept walking with Jesus. They thought they were understanding what he was teaching. And one time he went up to the Mount of Transfiguration. And they were happy to shine. And they brought somebody who had an epileptic uh, condition. Have you read that in scripture? And they were so... Listen, let me tell you something. That you are hearing truths being told you does not mean you are enlightened. I'm going to tell you what illumination is. Those guys had been with Jesus. They heard him every time. And now they brought that man and were embarrassing themselves, trying everything they knew to do. And here comes Jesus from the mountain. And then they brought the man. They said, your disciples could not heal him. And, and they just stood dumbfounded, hoping Jesus would not also be able to heal so that it would show that their case was nothing special. And Jesus proved them wrong. Isn't it amazing how you pray that other people fail in an area you have failed so that it will show that your ignorance is nothing special? It's so frustrating when you are failing in an area and somebody works flawlessly in that area. It cancels out every excuse you would have given. Hallelujah. That's why they hated Jesus. They hated Jesus because every time he showed up, his life and his actions was a message that frustrated the unyieldedness of the people. Jesus ministers to this person and at once he is healed. He comes into a temple and sees a woman 18 years bound. Have you read that scripture? I'm sure the people had been giving her all kinds of excuses. Madam, Look, this and that and that, and she believed it. But here comes Jesus. And then he lays hands on her and even tells her, Madam, I'm surprised you are sick. Didn't they teach you, all the people who have been teaching every time, didn't they teach you that you are a daughter of Abraham? Did they not tell you the covenant that God had with him? Ah, the woman said, I, I, nobody told me. And the, the scribes were standing there hoping Jesus will fail. And to their shame, he laid his hands and the woman stood up straight and they started finding excuses. Look at the excuses they brought. Don't heal people on Sunday. Don't give them food. There's all kinds of flimsy excuses. I pray that ignorance will be destroyed from your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ. We never know how cheap Satan is until we stand on the strength of illumination. Hallelujah. Illumination is a very interesting word. Isaiah chapter 60, please. It's a scripture I've been meditating upon, not just because the Lord gave it to us as a prophetic word. Everything in your life is at the mercy of light. Everything in your life 
is at the mercy of light. Please hear me and take what I'm saying seriously. Your breakthrough in life is at the mercy of light. Your illumination, your depth of spiritual enlightenment, the quality of your ministry, the quality of your life. He says, my son, pay attention to my words. He says, incline them to your ears. Do not let them depart from you. He said, they are life to those who find them. Not those who hear about it. They are life to those who found them. And health to their flesh. He says in Isaiah 60 verse 1. What's the first word? Arise. Arise. Can we get amplified? Is it possible? I like the way Ad, Ad, Amplified puts it. Very, very interesting. I came with a very strong burden tonight. Verse 1, Amplified. I like us to read it. One, to read. Stop. Just that point. From the beginning to that point. One, to read. Listen, this is, this is the prophet speaking. He says that circumstances have kept you at a level. Have kept your family at a level. Nobody crosses a particular line. Nobody crosses a particular dimension. A line has been drawn and ignorance sealed the line. And now he says, arise. It's a prophetic call. Break standards. Do something that has not been done before. And then he says, shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Why? For your light is come. You've heard me say it again. Not for your light is available. It has always been available, but until it comes to you. Are we together now? That's why two people, brothers and sisters, walk this earth and their, their, their testimonies are different. Like Goshen and Egypt, Others were dying in Egypt, whereas there was absolute tranquility in Goshen. Any man that ignores the illumination that comes from the word of God cannot be helped. That's the kind of person who no amount of deliverance, no amount of breakthrough, even if you pour one gallon of oil. You see, the trouble with the church is we... we of course, that's, that's not applicable here, but I'm speaking to the church. We hate illumination, but we love what illumination only can bring. If I look at you right now and say, Sam, do you know that there's a problem around your life? I see somebody, I see an altar. Sam says, now you are talking. Are you getting the point now? Anything that excuses your responsibility to contend and understand the word, we love it and we embrace it. That's the reason why we love healing. We love deliverance. Because in our minds, we think it's a faster route. Instead of studying the Bible, I can just get deliverance once. You see, nothing in the kingdom was designed to replace another truth. They all complement themselves. This is why you can find believers, they can go through deliverance, they can have healings, but never able to walk in certain truths. It's always very comfortable to say, oh, demons are stopping me, there's a cause, there's this and that and that. But then many people in the body of Christ, believe me, many people are not passionate after knowledge. I was taught by the Holy Ghost that only second to your passion and desire for God, your next assignment should be an, a, an unquenchable pursuit for illumination. You must have a hunger for light. You must have a resentment for ignorance. You must have such, such a resentment for ignorance. We travel around and I look at people outside. And I see how people are victims of what they don't know. You watch people all around. 
victims of what they don't know. You can see a woman sit down and, and please don't feel bad. I, I mean, see people trying to maybe fry yam or do something and, and you see that they are doing the best they know with the information they think they have. They never can know that life can be better. You see a lot of pastors, well-meaning and sincere people, but victims of darkness, victims of ignorance. And I made up my mind that in my life, I will be a bank of illumination. It's an assignment. It's a project I gave myself that I will surround myself with mysteries like chariots. That on the strength of those mysteries, you will dominate. I've been meditating on this scripture. It says, arise. Brothers and sisters, when the Bible tells you to arise, it means access has been given to that light. Arise. Arise. Shine. For your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 2. We're headed for verse 3, but let's just look at verse 2. Media, help us. Verse 2. It says, for behold, see, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. He said, but the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. Now, this is the part, the part that blesses me so much. Verse 3. Ah, Kabbalah. I receive it for my life. Every time I see this scripture, I know that I will never fail in life. I'm telling you. It's like, it's like you have found a jackpot. He said, Gentiles shall come. Gentiles shall come to what? I learned early in life that if you see people coming to you, nine out of every ten are not coming for you. They are coming for what you represent and what you carry. The day you let what you carry sleep, you get set for empty pews. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. You see, most preachers just think people like them. They say, my members love me. <laughs> Pray for them and let them not be healed for one month. And they will show you that, yes, they love you, but they love themselves more. Hmm. It says, and the Gentiles, brothers and sisters, something about your life will make Gentiles come. They will give every kind of excuse. People will say, but do you know it's not your tribe? While they are criticizing you, they are still coming. You know why? Because you see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something about illumination. Illumination is not a gift. It's a price. It's, it's, not, it's an endangered commodity. You don't find illumination on the ground. There are not many people who are really enlightened. And when you really are enlightened, the Bible says Gentiles. It's a force. It can't be stopped. Gentiles shall come to your light. And this is the part that is even greater. It says they are kings. See, their kings don't come to your light because they are arrogant people. The kings believe they have light too. They too have some level of result. So your initial light will not impress them. It will impress the poor. It will impress the sick. But the kings will say we are watching. The queen of Sheba heard about Solomon. But it was not enough for her to come. But as the news kept resounding, a time came she could not deny it. And she carried her bounties. Up she came. See, let me tell you. There are people in your life right now. It's not like they are not seeing you. Your light is not yet notable. But they are watching. They are paying attention to the transitions that are happening. They are watching your church. They pretend like they didn't hear the testimony. But they need what you carry. But it's not yet impressive. When you continue, a day will come. Look at what happened. Do you know that the scribes, the centurion, they had been following Jesus in secret. And one night, John chapter 3, one of them just came and said, Master, look, forget the fact that we insult you. We know, we know you are a man sent from God. Is it not in your Bible? They said, see, there is nothing as powerful as light. Men can argue it in the day, brothers and sisters. But time, when you become consistent, it says there are kings to the brightness. One result after another. You see, let me tell you, consistency is a sign of mastery. Anything you can, any result that is short-lived in your life was a guesswork. It was not founded upon truth. 
it was founded upon luck. Any dimension, listen to me very importantly, any dimension of result you had seen in your life before and you cannot get it again, it didn't happen on the strength and is dangerous. Let me tell you what deceives us. Sometimes you are, I've taught you about prophetic atmospheres. You can come into a man's prophetic atmosphere and leverage on his secret place with God and temporarily it will activate some results in your life that makes you think it was your personal altar that brought it. And so you will stop contending because in that atmosphere some things happen. You will now go back and find out you are left with your own atmosphere and your own growth and you will not be able to lift it this is what happens a man of god can come for a program and come with his own depth of spiritual reality and the strings of covenants he has with god and you find out that momentarily that church can experience growth but the man of god will now think is just a new level he's not learned the spiritual keys that really bring growth are we together now and so after a while he will find out that the truth about the state of the church is revealed. Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles. I want it to, it looks very simple, but I want it to be buried into your head. That brothers and sisters, your escape from life is your access to light. The day you find it, start jumping. I don't care what is before you. Just start rejoicing because you are out forever. Light. Light. It says, they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. Illumination. Let me tell you what illumination is. Reading your Bible does not mean you have illumination. Cramming scriptures and being able to quote them out is not illumination. Are we together now? See, one of the challenges with the body of Christ is you hear me quote scriptures and it's easy for you to think because I'm quoting them. You don't have to be a child of God to be able to quote scripture. The concept of memory is a psychological thing. Anybody can learn it. We teach children to recite memory verse. Abi, Sunday school. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning. And the child is saying it just like, like a robot. You think that child is enlightened? Of course, he's on his way to, en to enlightenment. But it's not enlightened. Many of us are frustrated because we think we have accumulated a lot of scriptures. And we think on the strength of those scriptures because we can speak them out. It means we are illuminated. No. You are only illuminated when understanding comes. When you can draw out the mysteries and the principles behind the scripture, illumination has come for you. Otherwise, everything you have is just the letter. And the Bible says it can kill. Learn this. It's not just because you found it in the Bible. Where it was written by his stripes, I am healed. And you say, oh, I found it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, this is your word. Hold on. You think you have gotten illumination. Are you seeing why we don't get results? Although we are holding scripture, it's unable to. The Bible says that we can make the word of God of non-effect. There is a technology that breaks the word of God and releases the life therein. That's what we call illumination. Two men were going with Jesus to Emmaus. You've read that scripture. And the Bible says Jesus, the living word, the resurrected Christ was with them. They were discussing with him, but their eyes were closed. A man can be around Bible, around church, around revelation. You are listening to several messages, but until your eyes are open, you will never have illumination. And the danger is that your familiarity with scripture will convince you to think you have illumination, but your results will show that you've not gotten it and it will frustrate you. That's the situation with many of us here. So you are spending time reading your Bible, which is good, but there is no illumination. Let me tell you how you will know. You can measure darkness in your life. Start looking at every area of your life one by one. The result there is a direct reflection of your access to light or otherwise. You will have to be very humble to admit what I'm telling you.
Hallelujah. Gentiles will come to your light. Your assignment is not to run around chasing people, looking for favor. No. The reason why we are the ones running around people is because we do not have light. The Bible says Gentiles shall come to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. If you want to come out of the situations that surround your life, the first key is light. The first key is illumination. There is something you do not know right now that is responsible for the quality of your life. Are we, are we together? Please listen, are we together? There is something you don't know right now. There is something you can know that will change your life forever. I sit down and I look at what the Lord has shown me now. And I look at what I used to know four, five, six years ago years ago and I cannot imagine that I was comfortable and even preaching at that level of ignorance between the last one year of my life I can turn back and see very clear evidences of ignorance beyond my imagination I would have argued with you if you told me that there were so many things I didn't know amazing there are many of us who are convincing ourselves right now that we are so enlightened but your life is betraying that conviction and so it's time to settle down and ask yourself very sincerely do I have light or do I just have the letter do I have light write this word down the mysteries of the kingdom I'm giving you a key to the prayer you may have been praying. The fast. If you're not interested in hearing what I'm saying, then forget, forget about a solution. Forget about results in your life. I really want you to get results. I really pray that we'll all get results. The mysteries of the kingdom. I've taught it here again and again that a mystery is a secret truth. A mystery is like a code of operation. A code of operation. A secret code of operation. In the kingdom, men reign on the strength of the mysteries. They have come to understand and apply. Write those two words. Understanding and application. These are the two things that make the word of God profit you. Understanding and application. In all you're getting, he says get understanding. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Wisdom tells you it is good to tithe. Understanding tells you how to tithe. That you don't just carry money and just come and drop like a bribe. The Bible says honor the Lord, not give to the Lord. When it comes to tithing, your attitude is as important as the substance you are holding. Are we together now? So the Bible teaches us that it has been given unto us. Say it has been given to me. Please say it, personalize it. It has been given to me. To know the mysteries of the kingdom. Brothers and sisters, if what I'm telling you enters your spirit and you take it seriously, you will get up and walk. You will, in, within a month, the results you will produce within a month will dwarf what you've had for many years. Please believe me anybody who is not ready to sit down and understand the mysteries of the kingdom is a man that cannot be helped i run away from people who do not have passion for understanding the word they are dangerous i rather stay with i rather stay with a herbalist a herbalist is more friendly at least he's passionate about something than than a careless person who has no passion his ignorance will affect you. Don't forget people have atmospheres. 
right the same way you contact sickness just by coming close to somebody and we say it's a communicable disease what do you know about kingdom wealth and who taught you what do you know what is your guarantee for a blessed life i think i'm fine you are joking you are really joking i went to school you are joking two times i'm very serious i mean jokes apart i'm really serious this night what do you know that will make you excel in ministry i'm a man of god they laid hands on me you are really joking what do you think will bring a crowd to your church? I'm probing, I'm showing you all the areas when I, when it's like a call and response. When I mention the area, tell me the mystery you know that supports your confidence that you will excel in that area. And you will see how we are moving with rings of ignorance. We are just hoping we know. Can you tell me what you think will make you remain in the next 20 years? What if somebody is calling your name to die tomorrow? I come for koinonia. God knows my heart is open. What else? See, I'm opening us up to see the need for strategic knowledge. You see, another mistake is many believers go for knowledge, but our knowledge is not strategic, it's not applicable. It's like a student who maybe got medicine. And he can sit down and say, I think I want to attend a, an architecture lecture. And he goes there. And then next tomorrow, he's in theater art. He's taking lectures, but it's not strategic. It's not constructive. At the end, he will never become a doctor. So many of us are puffed up by several messages we have listened to. You gather the message of anybody abroad, anything new, you just put them together. You swallow them like a drug and say, Satan, come and try me. And he says, you are still the same. Let me tell the truth. You have not changed. I don't want to waste my time gathering revelations and informations that sustain no power to produce results in my life and the life of others do you know the danger especially as a leader pastors hear this you see when people come they submit to your tutelage this is the danger so if while you are ignorant they keep drinking from that ignorance until the day god delivers you and you will hope that they are around when he delivers you so you can tell them look i've been misleading you here's the correction what if you are not there they travel with that ignorance start their own churches too and the ignorance spreads hallelujah there is something bishop oyedeko knows that we do not know there is something he has handled that is producing the results are we together oh he's just lucky he had an 18 hour vision wait until he tells you the processes that led to that thing that encounter I want you to be tired of lack of results in your life. We don't serve God for results, but you are frustrated when there is no result in your life. In every area of your life. So what gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Many people have said I will not die and they died. So think quietly. What gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Bold face does nothing to Satan. I won't die. What gives you confidence that you will remain in hell? Oh, by his stripes I am healed. You ask how many people keep quoting this thing as they keep coughing out blood till they die. I'm, I'm challenging you. Is God speaking to us? What gives you confidence, brothers and sisters, that you will get up and travel and come back safe? The Bible never hid it from us that there are arrows that fly by day. He never said they flew once, they won't fly. They are constantly flying, even now. The Bible calls certain things a noisome pestilence. Right? He said not the destruction that wasted by noonday. It tells you a thousand shall fall. So there are so many people falling. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to probe whether what we have is true light. Or just shadows of realities. 
what gives you a guarantee that you are going to get a job did you know that two for instance out of every maybe 10 or 20 graduates get jobs within their first five years of graduation there are many first class students, two one students, two two students from prestigious universities who are still waiting, joining the queue. Even if they give 1,000 jobs in a parastatal, there are other people who even have other advantages. They have uncles and aunties. You, you don't have anybody. So by default, you are disadvantaged. What gives you an edge? What makes you think you are going to rise? Is God speaking to us tonight? Hmm. Illumination. There are many pastors who give excuses. Oh, our church is not growing because the location is not, it's not very, the, the, the location is, is in a wilderness. Is that true? Is that true? Look what is happening to many families. We are victims of the arsenals of darkness. Anybody can die anyhow, any day. Anything can happen to anybody anyhow, any day. But it says, you will arise and shine. Oh, I respect the word of God. I not only believe it, I respect it. I found my way. My only confidence in life is on the strength. God took his integrity and put it to be released only when the word is understood listen what you don't understand is the same thing as not having it if i have can you help me with this camera i, I won't touch it just show me where i shouldn't touch oh, i shouldn't touch here all right can i hold this here is it okay look at this this is a wonderful gadget are we together please pastor femi come come just stand by my side this is a camera is that true he doesn't have any now if i say who is better i know you will say me because i'm holding one i'm i'm showing you cameras all around and then you ask me show me the pictures and i said look forget about pictures i have a camera are you not seeing it no 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 listen listen the goal of this camera is to snap pictures you can see and i've been holding this camera for a long time i'm even laughing at this guy and say you are standing no camera we'll see where the pictures will come from and you are holding this there are no pictures are you seeing that who is truly better i think it's this guy because he's in a point where he even knows he does not have so his breakthrough can be faster you you think you have if someone else comes with camera too you say we are colleagues because you are holding camera. You see what deceives a lot of people. Uh, the moment they hear a man of God share, they say, we are also, we are fellow pastors in this vineyard. We know what we are doing. And they will never sit down to learn. The woman with the issue of blood said, look, I, I know I have a problem. I'm not guessing. But the scribes will come for Jesus' meetings. They will come as contemporaries. When he's speaking, they'll be nodding. He knows the law. And they remain there in darkness. And there were other sinners who would come and receive. This is the problem with the church. We think because we have scriptures. The moment I say Isaiah 6, he say, oh, arise, shine. That's where he's going. But has it produced results? Has it produced results? This gentleman is holding a camera do you know his camera can even be better than this one yet it's not producing results no understanding let me tell you lack of understanding is as bad as ignorance you can have knowledge and it can be wasteful if there is no understanding yeah thank you The more I know God, the more I see how predictable this life can be. Listen, the more I know the ways of God, the more I see how predictable a man's destiny can be. As scattered and haphazard as it looks, there is a spiritual rhythm. Light can show you the path. It says, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path.
I'd like you to shout it after me. I'm tired of confusion in my life. Say, I'm tired of guessing in my life. That you are faced with challenges. And then you say, I think this is the key. You now try it. It doesn't work. You now go back. Do you know that certain challenges cannot give you a long time to keep guessing? If you don't get it once, it can destroy you. There is somebody out to destroy you in your village. And that person's destruction is only at the mercy of what you know that can bail you out. Your ignorance, if you allow it too long, you may be caught up in that tragedy. Are we together? This is what I tell myself all the time. Joshua Selman, you must get rid of ignorance and confusion in your life. And the key is the word of God. Listen, listen, listen. No other, no other instrument can give you true light outside the word of God. Make no mistakes about it. I've read a lot of books. I've read psychology books. I've read business books. I've read all kinds of things. Any principle or thought that is not consistent with the word of God is going to add to your confusion and ultimately waste your life. Because there are people who are trying to get enlightenment outside the world. The Bible calls their light darkness. Are we together now? I, I see a lot of people teach and talk and is even stepping into the church. Whenever we are teaching certain things, especially about success, we, we push the word of God out and we say, just leave Bible. This one, we are now talking common sense. Anything outside the word of God is going to confuse your life. What is contained in this word? Mysteries. Mysteries. Keys. Kabbalah Tayada. Keys that open doors. These are ancient keys, brothers and sisters. Those, see, there is no door in your life that has not been opened by somebody before. The Bible lists them in Hebrews chapter 11. Men who had these keys and did so many great things. Knowledge. Say it again, I'm tired of guessing, I'm tired of guessing, I'm tired of guessing. We are guessing over our finances. We are guessing over ministry. We are guessing over the anointing. I think I'm anointed. No, you are not. If you are anointed, there should be an evidence. If there is no evidence, you are not. Calm down and look for the keys. Hallelujah. If what happened to you last year remains with you this year, then it's your fault. We must contend for light. Everybody say there is a light that can deliver me. Everybody say there is a key that can open that door. Brothers and sisters, there is no door that is made without a key. But every door is at the mercy of the key. He said, I have given to you, it's been given to you to know the mysteries. The mysteries of the kingdom. What keeps you in divine health? Look at sicknesses flying all around. You enter a restaurant, you don't even know where they got the water from. And you are eating and you are happy and you are running around and you want to live long right now there are all kinds of documentaries that almost call everything bad i saw one that said microwave causes cancer for god's sake me that has to microwave food almost every day so that means i'm going to die young what do you understand by the life of god when the bible says great is the mystery of godliness that God can dwell in a man. Have you caught the, his, the, the revelation of that truth? That God can dwell in a man. That God can dwell in a man. Let's take our finances for instance. At least this concerns us. What do you know about your finances? Or are you hoping that one day you will be blessed? That's a costly hope. Sister, do you have any shorty that a man is going to come and carry you? Believe me, if all you have is that I'm fine or I'm in a place where there are gentlemen, you are joking. See, let me tell you something. Knowledge truly kills fear. 
stand up, Pastor Femi. Stand up, promise. Watch these guys. Please sit down. Sit down. Were you afraid of sitting? Did you turn back to even check? You know why? Because they are sitting based on an enlightenment. They know what this chair can do. Are we together now? They know that this chair can take their weight. They are not thinking about it. I'm not holding this mic wondering if it will shock me. I don't expect it to. Are we together now? I'm not holding this trusting it to scatter. No, 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 no. This guy is not playing this keyboard hoping that the sound will just stop. He knows it should continue because he's playing it with knowledge. I gave an example last year, I think when I was teaching. I don't know if he was here or another meeting. If I call somebody who cannot play this keyboard and I say sit down, look how wonderful what he's playing is. Are we together now? That person who doesn't know how to play keyboard. Cameraman, come. Uh, do you know how to play keyboard? Don't waste our time, come. All right, Mike, please stand up quickly. Just do whatever you think you know to do quickly. One minute. Now, let's see. Look at me. How many of you know that this keyboard is absolutely obedient? It will produce any sound. Now, play anything. Go ahead. You may be making sense. Go ahead. All right, watch this. Now, this guy thinks the problem is the keyboard. Are we together now? Because he doesn't believe anything is wrong with him. Ah, why are these keys not doing, why are they not playing like this? The problem is never the keyboard. The keyboard was designed to be played, but it has rules. There is a rhythm. You see the keys, black, white, everything scattered. All right? Okay, thank you, thank you. Go and do your job. <laughs> All right, so Mike, play. Please play something. Same keyboard, same church same ministry same business same academics same nigeria play go ahead anything same keyboard that guy said his government that guy said is 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 nigeria that is not giving job that guy says machines that cause cancer i mean look at this listen the bible now watch this when everybody's in a pool of ignorance and one person stands out what do you think will happen? The world was designed to not ignore spectacular things. It's impossible for a thing to be spectacular and not draw attention. Are we together now? Is your life spectacular enough to draw everyone, including your destiny helpers? Those who can say, look, Benga, come and take five plots of land. I just want you to be around me because there is a testimony that you carry something that is notable. My goodness. Life will become so cheap for you when you pay the price to carry light. You see, access to illumination is truly a sign of God's love because not everyone, listen, not everyone will have the opportunity to go to school. Not everyone will have the opportunity to learn English. Not everyone will have the opportunity to be born by rich parents. But everybody can have access to illumination. And brothers and sisters, when you find it, it will change your life forever. I kept thinking about this really. And I was telling myself, oh God, can you make the lives of your people so predictable? Absolutely predictable. Absolutely predictable. See, one of, the, one of the indices for measuring favor is, is um, the Bible calls it, it says you will be a delightsome land. People like to be around you because they have a track record that something happens to them every time they are close to you. I like getting close to the ma welfare mama because something happens to me every time. Are we together now? <laughs> Who is seeking you for what you carry? Is it not surprising you that you are a nuisance to everybody around you? They started it quietly, but now they are open about it. Everybody is telling you, you are really a nuisance to me. Pastors, who is seeking you? Who calls your phone 
and will not mind calling it hundred times because he knows that if you pick his problem dies who is willing to pick your call that even if you say i don't have credit say no problem me i have money it's, it's, i need light they sought for jesus to a point that people tore zinc they knew they could negotiate with the owner of the house later on who has been that desperate about your grace who has coveted your anointing so bad they can pay anything for it Who has defended you in the presence of your enemies because of the degree of impact you have made in his life? And the person has said, I will never hear anybody talk against Sam. What Sam has done to my life, even when they are right, I will fight them. Hi. See, brothers and sisters, there are cheap pathways you can find in this scripture and build yourself out of this wicked world. Everyone say illumination. Say understanding. There is something we all do not know that is responsible for where we are. The problem is we are too arrogant to learn. We are too pompous to admit the fact that there is something we do not know. How many young people brag around because they read one Brian Tracy book and they say, I'm a financial expert. You see that? There is so much ignorance in our generation. I'm speaking to people inside and outside. So much ignorance in our generation, spiritually. Every man of God believes him too. He's a captain of his own. Even if there's no result. And everybody comes and once you can join one scripture. And just say, the, I don't say it in a cynical way. I know the things that are not in my life. And I'm desperately pursuing them with every sense of humility and hunger. And even if it is one of our little ones here that have. It will not cost me anything to kneel down and say, show me the way. This is what we do not have. This is one thing I respect about this man of God. I'm sorry I have to use you, pastor. This is, this is, this is an elderly man. But the humility. This man has pursued me like, like, I don't even know what to say. I was shocked seeing him. I said it again. The day, I, the day he came over to my place and I was talking. I mean, these people eat my teaching in their church as if. You will never be the same man of God. It's a law. You will never be the same. I know why many of you are not being changed. Although you are in a place of tremendous change. Pride. Familiarity. You do not discern. You do not discern. Please listen to me. The Bible says you don't discern the Lord's body. And for that reason many are weak. Many are sick. Oh, I've had koinonia message, activating breakthrough, destiny, I've had it, I was even there. They used me as an example. And you think that letter is with illumination. And somebody somewhere in one, one room made with mud will download it and say, Lord, I have found it. I found the key. So destiny help us and be praying it and the Holy Ghost will say, this is it. A woman came from Benway State. I think, I, I can't remember last year or so. This woman came with her husband. They were pastors. For many years, they had struggled. It's a terrible thing to be in ministry without any helper. You pay for everything by yourself. <laughs> when, when the woman, listen, when the woman, I don't know how, I think one, somebody here in, in Koinonia went there and gave her just that message. Activating breakthroughs, the ministry of destiny helpers. She received that message digested the message. She said she listened to that message at least 20 or 25 times. There are messages in my life I've listened to up to 1,000 times. One message. God is my witness. One message. I'm a product of many anointings. What are you a product of? Your world, your rema, your deception. You keep moving around in confusion with no results. Staring up expectations in people. Oh, I've come for this meeting. You will see what God will do. They say, we are watching. At the end of you, say, it's just that there's no time. Otherwise, you would have seen what God will do. It's a lie. There is time. There is time. Nothing will ever cover for lack of light. Not suit. Not good dressing. Not English. Not even Rema. It says, if you are not rising, your light has not come. 
it was designed to come and pick you from where you are. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on us. It's in your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on high. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign on high. Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts. Is what I've come to do. I listen to at least one koinonia message i know there are uncommon mysteries forget that it came through me i have learned many things from my messages than many messages i listen to it and i'm praying and when is the time when apostle is prophesying i kneel down and i lift my hands as he's speaking see listen you have to learn what i'm telling you because this year make up your mind not to cheat yourself see arrogance with no result is not leading it's it's like a man wearing suit with not even five naira is there he say it's just that i kept the money so no 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 i'm tired of lack of results there is a higher standard god is gauging me with god will not gauge me with the same standard he's gauging many of us because to whom much is given much is expected are we together now Thank God for all of the breakthroughs and the impartations during my retreat for this year. I said, any ministry I honor we, it is like a rattling. We, you know how an earthquake is? Huh? An earthquake or a tsunami. That's what is going to happen in that church. Any ministry, including your church, man of God. My goodness. Yeah. To increase capacity. When you step in, you break chains. You shatter darkness. When you do that, for every ministration you go, there are 10 more waiting for you from it. You see that? Not the one that you just go and say, well, maybe the next one is September and you're just sitting. Of course, you don't use those things just as indices, but there is not enough fire. That's why. Because needs are still there. People suspect you have a track record of not producing results. So nobody's ready to invest in your anointing. Hallelujah. Please hear what I'm saying. What have you learned? What truth do you know that can bail you out? What do you know that can bail you out? If I give you a mic right now, I say, come, teach us one kingdom mystery you have learned. What will it be? What will it be? You see that many of you are just enjoying fellowship, but you are not really holding on to something. Kai, he said, I know whom I have believed. He said, I am persuaded. I've held on to these things. It was the apostle Peter that said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. You can't tell me I'm not holding this, no matter how you deceive me. I'm holding it. I can feel it. I have become one with that experience. What do you know about the anointing of the Holy Spirit? We keep talking about the ability of God walking in a man. You jump at it, you fall under that anointing. But what do you know about it? What do you know about the anointing and getting a job? What do you know about the anointing and breakthrough in ministry? What have you learned? God asked me to pause with the series we'll start. Because some of us, what we need is not just a new message. What we need is getting back to say, look, I need to get this thing now. There are certain truths that I know and I will never waste my time in certain levels of ignorance. Every time I meet a wall before me, I know that there is an anointing I must invoke that will call a man 
a man must appear for that door to open so my prayer is very strategic and intentional i don't pray stupid prayers i pray with intelligence lord where are the helpers i call them because i know if a helper does not appear that door will not open and here comes the helper because i know how to call them they never come on their own they are always called you have been waiting for them you will wait forever there is a mystery that calls helpers are you seeing that round? So our parents are waiting. God will send somebody to pay the rent. You will wait forever. There is a mystery. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. Am I challenging you tonight? I want you to get this thing. I love you. That's why you see me teach this. I want you to hold on to something. Don't hold on to shadows. We are in a hurry to teach. We are in a hurry to do ministry. When we should sit down and learn. I tell you the truth, I wish that I can just have a vacation of four or five months. December's are usually happy periods when we round up program because that two or three weeks where I don't have to teach anybody, I now go back to feed my spirit. I preach an average of two or three messages every week aside from school of ministry we are resuming. So there are so many things sucking out of me. Time is so limited for me. But many of us have everything all the messages are there with the testimonies do you know you can sit down crying in a room and the light to liberate you is in a message lying down there and the angels are standing close to you and say activate us what is all this what do you need to learn again and you call your uncle he says i won't pick and you are there helpless and the angels are saying what is uncle we are here what is uncle have you not read in the Bible that strangers shall feed your flock? Which one is uncle again? But in your mind, according to what you know, if your uncle does not pick your call after two days, you are dead. Who told you? Aya. Have you not had the ravens brought bread for Elijah? Where did the ravens come from? Lack of light has limited us. Please hear what I'm saying. God can raise helpers for you. You have tied God. How many pastors sit down and say it's, it's, it's because we are young people, it's because we have not put balloon around the church. That's why people are not coming. No. And we get angry and fight ourselves and move in ignorance and, and, and we have protocol and PA, no power, no grace, no understanding, no results. The trouble is that they now invite us for programs and you see people writing our ignorance and they go back to go and practice it and come back shocked and confused. Lean and hungry. Say, I'm tired of guessing. Say it again. I don't know how to beg you and make you believe what I'm saying. I honor the Lord for what he's doing in this ministry. The crowds outside, the crowds inside. But brothers and sisters, hear me. And I say this with all humility never make a mistake to think it is guess it can be reproduced anywhere the same result it was founded upon mysteries not luck are we together yeah. jesus went to the desert the same crowds came he went to the mountain he went by the the people men and women climbed the mountain stayed there three days he had to now say let's feed them Is God speaking to us? Who told you God cannot change your story? Who told you that God cannot lift you up? There is something you don't know. I'm talking especially to the sisters. This our dependency mindset must die this year. This sitting down and hoping. Not, when is Valentine? Answer me. I'm not laughing. When is Valentine? Next when 14. Next week Friday. Next week Sunday. It's possible right now that many of us have expectations. And in our prayer, I'm not saying you are carnal, but you are just hoping that somebody will be the one to come and bail you out. Listen, this word will never profit you until the light breaks and the mystery behind it enters you. When you hold on to it, go to bed. You have entered your Sabbath. See, 
I don't care if at the time you are holding it, Bishop Oyedeko was there probably with one or two clothes, but when he caught that revelation, he said he shouted, I can never be poor. Can you say you can never be poor? Honestly. Can you say it? Me, I can say it, oh, my goodness. I wave poverty by, it wave me back. Deal done. Because for as long as there is one sick body, hmm, for as long as there is one life that must be changed, you see, there is something you can hold on to, brothers and sisters, that will wipe your tears. Look at Frank Edwards. He carried something he knew and sits upon that keyboard it, and bought cars with it and started an NGO with it. And his blessing lies with it. What have you been ignoring that is authorizing Satan in your life? What have you been ignoring that is stopping you from entering school? You are saying, Jam is hard. Keep quiet and think. What has been stopping you? I'm on my way to paradise. I'm on my way to paradise. Listen, let me tell you why I'm teaching you this. You see, my heart will bleed if we keep having people. I told you the Lord showed me that this year, Koinonia will be like a place of pilgrimage. I saw several people coming. It will be a painful thing to see pastors, businessmen come and giving testimonies and say, I just had three messages and it changed me. And all you do from now till December is to clap. Wow. Is it true? A miracle happened yesterday in a meeting. A lady who had a hole in her teeth, teeth supernaturally appeared before everybody. And the people were watching. I don't know what some of them thought I was. But let me tell you. With that kind of result, you will not be hungry. I promise you. Are we together? No, oh, no, no, no. Hunger, you and hunger will part away. You are not selling it. But somebody will be too grateful. And people were crying and just watching. And I sat down and I looked. I said, my goodness. When you catch this thing, ba, you have caught it. If it's not there, it's not there. Hallelujah. There's a particular university There. are currently doing an election of the vice chancellor and all of that i think you guys will bear me witness when we're coming and several people were calling me oh i'm going to come will it work How? i mean these are people distinguished personalities that on a good day if i knock their office they should arrest me and go and lock me but something there is something they need and god didn't put it outside me every useful thing is inside me wisdom anointing i love the lord you can never take it and leave me we must go together if you need it, this body will enter a plane with it. We will all go together. That's why you should never, never, never not be successful in your life. Shout it again. I hate confusion. See, Satan comes to you and manipulates your life. He studies your ignorance and uses it as his tools. He studies your ignorance. He can create illusions out of your ignorance. Satan is not a fool. He doesn't just run and come into your life. He takes a track record. He looks at the areas you don't know anything about or where you have not respected the authority of the word of God. And so he can look at you and say, do you know that until they do arrange for you on internet, a husband is not coming because he has studied and he has seen that you have not found out that light that male and female, he created them. That the Bible says, seek out of the book and read. None shall want her mate. He searches the bank of the word in you and does not find that mystery present. And he says, use this. And all of a sudden, you are a Christian. You love God. You are praying in tongues. But the next thing, you now start going to join all kinds of useless groups because you are looking for a, a husband. And he takes advantage of you. And he will bring a demon to your life and destroy you. You will marry in two months and suffer for the rest of your life because of ignorance and you find out that in that one mistake your ministry has been implicated in that one mistake your children have been implicated because they are going to grow under the atmosphere of a bad father 
God is telling you this way. The authority over your life is saying this way. And people say submit. What have you ignored that is responsible for the strength of darkness in your life? I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do for I need you more and more I'm so aware of my ignorance so I'm chasing after you no matter what I have to do Lord I need you more and I want to challenge you koinonia you have to be determined go back home tonight and write a list of all the major areas of your life where you truly know that you are not getting results humble yourself and pursue light are we together now are we together now forget about valentine or whatever it is of course celebrate it god bless you but i'm telling you this if you want a happy day february 14th every day of your life find out what has god said do i understand what is don't think what you think god said you see that you can assume it's like exams every student sits down they say start and everybody's writing and when you come out the person will say what was your answer you say five you say my own was three and two of them believe they are right it's left for the lecturer by the time you see zero what does that mean it means you were wrong say ah but the man didn't mark my script well you still got zero everybody who scored five got it for you did your calculation and arrived at three meaning you failed you didn't get it well it's up to you to adjust and say no 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 i think i missed something or be arrogant and say it's a bad man waiting for another man many of us never will admit that we are ignorant it doesn't cost me anything you you don't know how i whenever god tells me son i think you need to know more there is a dimension of me you do not know here and you have to correct it i jump at it i almost spend a vigil online searching for everything looking for any koinonia message that relates to that if god says son you like ladies this night be like him where are all those hot messages i preach on character be like him um um the, uh, he heaven and hell realities of heaven and hell part one and two that's what i will listen to till tomorrow till it irons out that dimension in me you don't tremble at his word that's why we don't change when you look at ministries and see the ministries that there is the anointing on their life you see what is happening you just sit down you see you will never preach people into running away from results because you are not getting it. If I am not getting results in my life right now, and Pastor Femi is getting results, and I try to trivialize what he's doing to make you consider him unserious, I'm only joking. Because the truth is, you have problems. And do you know members know where to get answers? Oh, yes. They know where to get answers. I told you, was it last week or week before last, that if I am an unbeliever, when I'm sick, I promise you I'll go to Babalao. I wouldn't do it in the secret. All these go to the secret. I will do it openly. Let camera even follow me. I will go there. And then I'll wait for the one person who will come to challenge me. And I'll bring another person as sick as me. And say, I will kneel down and apologize to you if you heal him. Otherwise, go back home. As simple as that. Are we together? I foresee that a time will come. That thing will happen in church. Members will hold charm and come for service with it. The moment they are talking before altar call, somebody will stand up and say, Sir, this guy I bought for you, this is the charm that brought it. And I can throw it if you can prove it otherwise. That's what happened between Moses and Pharaoh. He had to take the rod and Pharaoh said, Get out of this place. You grew up, you ate the food that this God, Ra, brought. Now you are coming to destroy it. And Moses said, I found someone higher nobody great nobody greater no nobody greater than you listen moses said as at that time i thought ra was the highest of the gods and so my allegiance but i found i found somebody in the wilderness and he called himself i am 
and he said that he's coming to show his sovereignty and when he swallowed up this and after nine ten plagues pharaoh had to give up pastors let's stop deceiving people we know where we are telling the truth and where we are not telling the truth we know where we have results and where we don't have results let's admit it and not explain creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god is waiting for the manifestation there are people who have traveled from far and come for this meeting now some of them have come desperate to receive something imagine if all these people traveled all the way and then they just go back like that If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you will be very frustrated in your Christian journey. Because the end of every assimilation of truth is that it produces a result for you. By the time you get up and go home, now you already know that every time you see your father misbehaving, you now know because you've received superior intelligence that this man is not acting on his own volition. He's been influenced by powers. You see, the devil can no longer use his habit to keep the spirit of anger in you because another light has delivered you. So when you come out from the place of prayer and he starts ranting like a beast, you know you already have superior intelligence and you find out that Satan was using that to keep the spirit of anger so he would destroy you. But now another light has delivered you. And then number two, you now know that he's not fighting with him physically and saying, Daddy, I wound you. The moment he says that, you know where to go and all of a sudden your father will see you and it's as if he's afraid there's something wrong but there are many of us you leave koinonia you come and you are fighting you slap your father you beat why are you acting in ignorance is god speaking to us now have you not noticed how every time you are pressing into God, it looks like there are people all around you who can station themselves to do things that would destroy you. They are trying to fight something. Hallelujah. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that light will give you peace, 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 peace. It will swallow away fear from your life and it will give you peace. When you have a revelation, for instance, hear me, that no human being, no man born of a woman can take your life. Not with enchantment. I can only imagine how many places my name has been called in different altars. Maybe when I'm traveling now, they now say die. It's difficult to kill me. I look just physical, but they that are with me, the mysteries that surround me are many many like you see obama you can just see him walking you try to shoot him before you leave the gun you are dead you don't know who was watching you you just know they shot you you didn't see anybody but a bullet entered you because what is more than what you are seeing koinonia hear me i want you to hold your bible please hold your bible inside and outside hold your bible say after me lord jesus this year i pray that the mysteries that would have to be opened for my destiny to change hidden in this word may they be open for me the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of influence the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of favor the mysteries of advancement the mysteries of breakthrough the mysteries of the anointing the mysteries of grace release it upon me oh god if god answers that prayer you'll be a wonder this year because it will surprise you it's not because there is nobody to give you the job there is something you have not done. The earlier you admit it, the faster and the better for you. Oh, there's one guy that says I should just hold on. When a job, when there's job interview, 
he will give me. That's too costly. You are living your life at the mercy of somebody. If it now doesn't work, you will hate the person. Why don't you live? Forget about all these things and wait upon God. Are we together now? Oh, a lecturer promised me that this time around I will get A in my project. What if that lecturer is sick and is not there during your defense? Then you fail. Woe to him that puts his strength in a man. Oh, God said I'm going to enter the house. How do you think you are going to enter the house? Just because you think you are earning 50,000. Can 50,000 give you a house? You too ask yourself. Look at, see, this is how foolish, I'm sorry to say it, but this is how foolish some of our parents are. They, 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 whenever they are, they are looking at their salary, oh, 50,000, so let's calculate. It will never work that way. The devil will use it to destroy you. One sickness will wipe away the budget and the devil will keep mocking us. You've raised 500,000. One sickness will wipe it away. But you can walk certain principles and a man will lack his sleep in the night. And get up in the morning and say, sorry, I don't know who this person is, but the Lord has called me and said, Pastor Alpha, God has said I should change your story. And you'll be sitting there dumbfounded. And God will say, you ask for it. I said, ask and you shall receive. But the Bible says that we not pray amiss. Mothers, fathers, everybody, please hear me. There is a way out of everything, I believe. There is a way out of everything. Sister, that marital delay in your family can be broken to pieces if a certain kind of revelation. Just one more thing I'll add to us and we'll pray. One of the mysteries that I have learned in my life that has changed my life forever is the discernment of the body of Christ. I know there are many mysteries. I keep repeating these things because I want your life to change. All men are not equal. Criticize me, but just listen. All men are not equal. If you take that mindset, this is not supposed to be a bad statement. Please don't misunderstand me. I wish it were a lie, but it's the truth. All men are not equal. It was the apostle that was teaching the church in Corinth. He said, because you cannot discern the Lord's body, the organogram of, and the structure. He said, for this cause, for not discerning, I'm not talking of Holy Communion, for not discerning the body and the individuals that have been stationed there who are carriers of your breakthrough. He said, some are weak. How many people have died today because they have not discerned what God has put in the body? It's like a table. If you come to eat on the table, is it not what you know that you will eat? You see something looking yellow, you are not sure and you will leave it there. And later you find out that that thing is good for your health. That's how we are. Listen. I'm talking about light and illumination. The Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in us in all richness. Colossians 3, 16. But you see, one of the greatest blessings of God to the church outside the Holy Spirit is the positioning of gifts in the body. Please listen to me. I've told you that there are two ministries you must encounter for your destiny to open. The moment you meet Christ, there are two ministries you must encounter. The apostolic and the prophetic. The Bible says the church was built with a very definite system. It says Christ being the chief cornerstone and directly above it are foundations the apostles and the prophets now that's not to say other um, members of the body is the same thing you don't give your life to the holy spirit you don't come and say holy spirit you died for me he didn't die for you although they are equal with god but salvation has been put in no other name there is an office that ministers salvation are we together that's how it is you have passed listen there are certain dimensions in life you can never take yourself. You hear me say this thing all the time. There, no matter how arrogant you are, no man can bless himself. There are certain dimensions that 
it will take a representative of these ministries it's an election by grace to open up certain doors for you and you will walk in it as if the devil never existed there are many churches who have done everything but ignore these ministries and many of you have been trained to criticize all kinds I've, I've told you here just keep quiet when it comes to the body of Christ serve God with truth and dignity there are many of our parents that are grounded God will invite a man to their churches and they will look at the person and say this young guy or God will invite somebody who will come and maybe the person cannot speak English very well and they now sit down intellectually and the man is teaching he may not be able to talk very well but there is an office he occupies are we together now he may talk and mix it with language and you are there calculating intellectually say i thought I, I need somebody with rema tell me greek and hebrew words whereas the person sent he came out dressed like john like 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 a prophet even jesus could not ignore the ministry of john and excel because when he came he looked for the one who that mantle was upon that foundational mantle john said ah i've seen you say no suffer it to be so I, I will not break protocol. Jesus would have been surprised if he didn't pass through John. When it was time, the Holy Ghost spoke to certain apostolic councils, separate me Paul and Barnabas. He spoke to them. There was something they did upon Paul and Barnabas. Did you know that Agabus had daughters that were prophets, but they never excelled in ministry? Look at that. They died with their prophetic grace. Because although they were prophets, they ignored the structure of the body. Listen, there are many people the Bible talked about for a little time and you never had them again. That's why some of us are where we are. Gods of ourselves, with our own rema, bragging all around. There was a pastor friend, I used to watch him. Um, the guy loves me so much, he admires me, but... I think for a very long time I used to see him. He just comes around, laughs around. When they are prophesying or speaking, he's even embarrassed sometimes to lift his hand. He just, he just lifts his hands as if he's waving. And I knew that this guy would never receive anything. In his mind, he thinks he will receive. Let me tell you something. There are requirements from receiving from these gifts. One of the requirements is honor. 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 You must honor both the person and the office. He says, he, please, this is not human worship. I don't want to, I have no business. I wish I were not the one preaching this. I wish you were just hearing a tape so that you will believe it's true. I have seen, listen, I have passed so many people who there is enough grace to wipe their tears and their families. And I've been shocked the way the anointing was locked up within me as I watched these families go down in penury. Because honor is the key that releases the anointing. Jesus entered certain cities and passed like this. A woman was pressing his garment and other people were looking at him. What have you ignored that has refused your door from opening? Please hear what I'm saying, Koinonia. Don't wait until after 10 years of miserable failure and then you now think and say, let me listen to this message hear it now and rise wake up and leave rise above your contemporaries as if the devil does not exist a few who have learned this key have broken every limitation and barrier the bible says for this cause many are weak when it was time when sickness when the serpents were destroying the people nothing happened to moses question what did the snake see that made them not to bite moses it's in your bible Right? That he told him, lift up a serpent. Is it not true? Look at how people were immune in the Bible. Things were happening to others. Elijah, there was famine. He never was even concerned about the famine. Because he knew that nothing would happen to him. There was famine in Samaria. Elisha came. He was not saying, Ay, I'm dying. Give me food. He came and saw women eating their children and said, what happened? There was another mystery that gave him supply. Brothers and sisters, there is a way out of every situation in your life. You can come to a man of God to pray for you. 
but you can just come as if you are coming to somebody who manufactures charm do you know even if jesus appears right now there are people who encounter him and still go back unchanged yes absolutely don't you think because he's jesus he will change the law is still the same if you cannot honor his representatives then you do not honor him the result will still be the same who told look at how many parents please you're a pastor how think of how many parents in your church or how many elderly people have come to meet you to say man of god you see let me tell you something many people just believe that ministers and, and, and newspapers have made this happen they believe ministers of the gospel are daft people fraudulent people how to manipulate money from members and enrich themselves that's the mindset newspaper gives and many people carry that faulty mindset and some of us as young as we are that's our thinking look how our families are suffering you pray individually and say god help god said i answered the prayer sins open your eyes and see you have ignored ministries that can wipe your tears you are dear a, 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 a program that you will finish five years you are still there seven years on your verge of moving you have never said for once can i not is there no system in the kingdom to bail me out for this cause i'm just sharing with you one mystery i think this is the cheapest of all mysteries because you don't even have to be intelligent to access this i have watched with shock the way I have ministered to people and their lives have changed. A, a woman gave a testimony and this is true. This is, I, do, I, I don't mean it in any idolatry. The woman said her daughter had been telling her to listen to one koinonia message and she said she always used to ignore it because you know she had problem with praying in tongues and all of that. You, you know what I'm saying? And one day things got bad and she said she was listening to one message in her dream that her daughter was listening to and then God was, you know, using my voice to just challenge her and say, go and listen to that message and change your story. She said she told her daughter to transfer it into her phone. Listen, there was someone that had owed her for a long time. As soon as she transferred that text message, just the text as in, uh, you know how it, you transfer a message, it just touched her phone. That was how the person called her and said, where are you? Come and meet me at the bank. The woman said, this is a lie. What is going on here? It will only work for those who already have honor presiding them otherwise you will pass it like this and move on. when the child of the shunammite woman died she was not confused she knew where to run to she said saddle your ass he said don't stop whoever asks you is all well say it is well and he sent gehazi gehazi came and looked at the woman he says it's all well says well give me a chance i know the person i'm looking for and she went there and said you represented something in the spirit that brought this child otherwise this child would never have come know what to do with this child she put his office under pressure elisha tried everything spoke the child refused to wake up and he took his mantle he said even if it's for me to be foolish see there is a way you can honor a man of god and put pressure on his office not anoint him his office it will force him to release something into your life when i say honor i don't mean money a deep a deep seated there are few men of god i've met in my life and the way i honored them when they were speaking and blessing me i knew it came from their spirit spirit i'll find somewhere to stop because i want us to pray brothers and sisters results are possible in the spirit it's not a matter of luck it's time for you to start knowing what you are not doing the mystery of the communion many of us take communion just as something they do in church get me wafers get me zobo okay there's five alive bring it and they're like, oh god thank you and you just throw it you just took breakfast whereas it has delivered a lot of people tithing you do it but not with understanding so the moment promise comes to stand here or anybody you just you are just waiting those who are tight as you come and stand and although you are supposed you are doing something spiritual it's not working because it's not done the bible says honor the lord he didn't say bribe him you squeeze your envelope you just come and stand and say oh yeah god take no when abraham met melchizedek king of salem that ancient city 
listen do you know it was after he gave the tithe immediately god spoke to him and said fear not he was teaching him a mystery he said i'm about to bless you it takes courage to be prosperous because you are about to be controversial so fear not there is something i'm about to open in your life that will make people say well, when did it happen he said don't be afraid i know i'm about to bless you but my first instruction is fear not you have done something that is about to bring prosperity people will not understand the mystery so be courageous to take the criticisms because i'm about to change your life he said i am your exceeding great reward abraham is so intelligent the moment god said i am your exceeding great reward he, the, Abraham started thinking generational blessings because he knew that blessing was too much. He said, God, so let's talk about my future because I know that a man is a failure until he has a successor. You are now beginning to speak generational. Where is the child? And God says, ah, who is this man that, ha that has my mind? That's how to do business with God. You have so aligned, you understand the language of God. Look at what Solomon did. When it came to Solomon, Solomon said, Lord, give me an understanding heart. I am little. Let me lead your people. He knew where to touch God. Ah, God said, you didn't ask for the life of your enemies. Gave him riches, wealth, and honor. Gave him, you see why Solomon was blessed? He had understanding. Understanding. It was an impartation. Just one mystery I've shared with you. Do you know if you hold on to this mystery, this law of honor, this year alone, you will get more results than many people get in their lifetime. I promise you. Just this law. Just this law. Just this law. Something you are ignoring is allowing tragedies to continue in your life. Something you are refusing to hear is keeping you bound sister it's not like a man cannot come there is something you are ignoring if you will make that adjustment tonight god will surprise you there are brothers here there are things you are ignoring you don't pay attention to instructions there are people inside and outside you don't approach god with a stubborn heart you approach god with a childlike heart please please koinonia hear me i'm about to pray for you for heaven's sake believe the things you hear me say i love you too much to mislead you gentiles please give us isaiah 60 again verse 3 this is the year that gentiles should come to your light this is the year it should happen that you see somebody get up and come and meet you i mean gentiles coming to your light they come with their blessings when jesus was born the wise men saw his star they started looking for it with gold frankincense when they looked at jesus they looked at a baby but they were wise enough to know this is not a baby they started bowing down they didn't wait until he became an adult they didn't say let's see let's watch if he becomes a serious man they knew that this guy is the one that was prophesied and they started bowing down if wise men could bow to a baby bow to certain principles and change your life forever hallelujah do you believe what i shared with you tonight please the body of christ is not lacking revelation what we are lacking is understanding and the grace to do to live by the truth we know he said now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them i now see why god constrained me i was to start another series i mean an explosive series and god was just constraining me no let the people get this thing otherwise you keep dumping revelation after revelation and you know what i'm doing to you the more i keep giving you revelations without probing your reception a time will come you will be so puffed up of knowledge without any result and it will be dangerous hallelujah saul kai oh my goodness saul's donkey was missing his father kish brothers and sisters hear me there was no hope of finding that donkey i hope you know naturally speaking three days they could not find the donkey 
and they say you know what let's not waste our time there is a man there is a man this man there is a prophet there is a man of god and they said ah, there's nothing to take to him they were smart enough and the moment they went to the gate at the gates they saw him and he looked at them do you know what he told them he said go and wait for me and i will tell you everything in your heart do you know what is a mountain to you is within the grace of somebody to stamp it for you what looks like a mountain you are there complaining about house rent and god is saying no 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 everybody is growing but there are people who have been graced to trivialize your challenges if you have the eyes to see look at at once they met samuel samuel said i will tell you every he didn't say i will sit down for counseling he said just go up there wait for me i will tell you what is in your heart and when he went there their biggest problem became the smallest he said i know you came for restoration forget about that that's not the issue the donkey has been found is that a human being you think that's a human being talking no that's a system it's not a man it's a system in a human body the same thing with melchizedek you think melchizedek was just a man just a man older than abraham how can a man bless a man and and say possessor of heavens and earth can a man bless another man like that a man that even christ associated himself with the bible says his priesthood is after the order of melchizedek read your bible and see all these strange men elijah noah i've taught you do you know what it means for a man to build an ark that is equivalent to three stadiums three stadiums story building three stadiums alone in hundred years he built it is that a normal human being made of gopher wood so you know why he cursed his son i've told you he didn't curse his son just because he saw his nakedness there was something the son saw is a mystery are we together now when jezebel was rising to judge people elijah shows up the tishbite the bible calls him you think that's a normal human being he appears again and he appears again in revelation what of enoch the seventh man from creation he used to walk among them and one day they didn't find him just imagine one day we don't find aaron no grave no nothing it's after he leaves we may say ah so this guy who have been calling Aaron that's what happened to Jesus when he resurrected people looked at him and said my goodness so it is true see when we get to heaven one of the shock for people is when God shows the the spiritual content of some of the people that were walking on the earth some of us will put our hands on our head and say I lived with this guy forever I, he was my roommate yet I didn't have the eyes to see I was in his church I was even an usher there was capacity like this to help me look at Gehazi foolish man if you wanted money if if you are with a master that blesses somebody and you want money is it not to kneel down and beg rather than going to lie you see why he's foolish very stupid man that's why he didn't receive any man to a man who can wipe a rich man's story would not you just kneel down and say my father change my story And he said, is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be king? Poured oil upon him and say, as you go, you will find two men. They will appear from nowhere. The word created them. Look at how these guys manipulated nature at, their, at the frequency of their will. They were like God. They laughed at Elisha and said, you have bald head. He, he created a beer, a sheep beer. It came out, ate the children and disappeared. What kind? The Bible says in Hebrews 11, it said the earth is not worthy of this kind of people. You see them walk. The earth is not worthy. Honor. Oh, Something you are ignoring is destroying your life. We are going to pray. The purpose of this teaching tonight is to let you know that between you and your mountain is a mystery. Is a mystery away it can keep that mountain there forever or shatter it i have met people who changed my life in less than 24 hours less than 24 hours less than 24 hours 
what are you ignoring some of you your family members have ignored you that's why things have not changed they have refused to admit that there is an anointing on your life so every time you step in your neighbors are there benefiting from your grace but they have refused to acknowledge it brothers and sisters although they are your mothers and fathers things will never change until they come into that recognition please rise up on your feet this prayer session we're entering i want you to pray with all your heart lift up your hands and thank the lord for this word tonight illumination the grace that comes hear me when men have an understanding the grace that comes when people can honor thank you lord for this word I like you to lift your voice and pray and say lord i know that the mountain before me can leave i just don't know how to let it go but i want it to go in this year lift your voice and pray this mountain standing before me there is a way out pray lift your ministry lift your academics lift your job Lift everything before God. Lord, I know I've been trying and trying and trying. I've been trying. I've done all I know to do. But tonight, I admit. I admit. I, just show me, oh God. Show me what I need to do. Shela those outside make sure you are praying jesus brought you here to change your life forever light 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 sika barato soto predege de bele de bos saka prata seta le pratica de koshoto prada na bala na bala na ba hallelujah hallelujah i want you to mention every area of your life where you know sincerely that you have not seen results be very sincere with god and say lord there has to be a way out of this lift your voice and pray please take it serious koinonia lord i've not seen the anointing in my life pray Lord, I'm tired of struggling. I lay hands on the sick and nothing happens. I prayed and fasted, nothing is happening. Lord, my finances. I've read books, but there's something I've not seen. It's just not changing. No matter what I do, I know something is wrong. Lord, favor. I've not caught the mystery of favor. Everybody hates me everybody runs away from me even those who want to help me change their mind something must be wrong somewhere i admit tonight that i need help lord i pray for my academic it's been from one tragedy to another there, there's got to be a way out hallelujah hallelujah listen we are still praying i like you to pray and say lord i make a vow before you i'm on a strategic project to eradicate ignorance and confusion in my life in strategic areas i ask for grace i ask for grace pray grace lord i will sit down with this issue of finances 
and resolve it once and for all i will sit with this issue of powerlessness this issue of lack of church growth this issue of not having a message to preach this issue of failure all around Aparato soto prende que de balada bosh Rakata parada bosh Come on be angry with the challenges in your life and pray 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 I was studying I wanted to find out the secret of church growth I've heard people say it I've listened to them I couldn't quite get the light they got and one time I was praying and the Spirit of God took me to mark one two three and it was like an anointing that came I knew I had gotten it I knew I had gotten it when people talk about prosperity most of the scriptures in Deuteronomy 8 18 I've not gotten light from that scripture of God and God will take you through that word to somewhere else that becomes your access point out Are we together? Two more prayer points. You're going to pray and say, Lord, every principle I have ignored that is responsible for where I am now, I receive grace to make amendments. Go ahead and pray. Many of us have ignored the law of honor. You have not discerned the body. Lord, I cry for grace tonight every principle that should have opened a door for me i ignored it out of pride i ignored it out of ignorance i i ignored it out of complacency and laziness tonight oh god i cry tonight oh god i cry pray pray Hallelujah. He said, I commend you. I commend you to the word of his grace. He said, He's able to make you wise. And to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. You have ignored the word. And you've gone around looking for things that only the word can give. Or you have been in close touch with the word. But just growing in knowledge without revelation. Revelation is not knowing what scripture has said. Revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life. That's revelation. God said it's not revelation. It's prophecy. It takes understanding to convert prophecy into manifestation. God said is prophecy, not revelation. Revelation is where you have caught the mystery of translating that prophecy into a, into a, a manifestation in your life. Many of us are carrying God said wonderful, but prophecy has a dynamics to its manifestation. There is, a, there is an alignment there is a path you have to play. Please pray again and say, Lord, what have I ignored that is responsible for where I am? Open my eyes. I will make amends. I will make amends in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm about to pray for you. Do you know that there is a relationship between soul winning and answered prayer? Are we together? This is just one mystery that can explain the reason why many of us are not getting results in prayer. There is a direct relationship between saving souls genuinely and answered prayers. 
A man can save souls and walk his way into unending breakthrough. Just like that. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12, right? When you read from verse 3, there about, it says, They that be wise will shine like the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore. That's a mystery that any man who is committed to turning men to righteousness must shine as the stars. He said, he that winneth souls is wise. And Solomon speaking of wisdom said, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. He said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. Just for winning souls, you are entitled for a baptism of wisdom. And many of us want to be wise. We want to do all of that. And you watch sinners go to hell. You are coming for meeting and you watch people around. You are not passionate. You are embarrassed. The Bible says, He that is ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Not on the last day. He is before the father making advocacy for you. He says, I will be ashamed of him before my father. Are we together now? Say, Lord, I receive grace to be doggedly involved in anywhere your heart is. Many of us don't know that the key to get God's heart is be involved where his heart is. God is in the business of making sure many come to righteousness. You can't stand in your camp alone and say, God, come and give me tea. Come and give me bread. And God is saying, the time is running out. There are people going to hell. This is the direction I'm facing. If you want me to see you, turn around and come here. Don't just stand behind here. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, let, let me run at your heartbeat. Let me run at your heartbeat. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Not just my own agenda. Let me be involved in what you are involved in. Souls. Souls. Transform. Souls. Genuinely saved. Souls. Established in righteousness. Hallelujah. Listen. Please be committed to soul winning. Not just preaching to people. Be committed and bring them to the house of God to be established. Do this for just one month and you will see breakthroughs that will surprise you. Believe me when I tell you this. Believe me. Look at churches that don't win souls. They never grow. They never grow. There's no reason to grow. See, if you say you are growing spiritually, ask yourself, what parameter am I using to measure my growth? If you think you are growing spiritually just because of complicated bombardment of Rema, you are fooling yourself. At the end of it, you will cry. A small child who may not know much, but do much with what he or she knows, will be standing and excelling. Just like you see certain people doing tutorials and talking and speaking English, and they will write the exam and get 40. And one obedient student, he follows the examples as taught. Every, he may not be so smart, but he's just too obedient to be average. The ways of the kingdom have been simplified. Follow it with total obedience and conviction and walk your way to a life of wonder. Do you know, especially for pastors, many pastors are stubborn, I tell you. They never listen. They never walk. This part of this humility, the precepts of God, they want to define their own laws of success until after 10 or 20 years. So they find out they are preaching more, they are fasting more, there's no result. Whereas a simple childlike obedience will take them out. You see another man of God just come up with a heart panting after God. And you, you will look around his life and say, where is the results? They are spiritual laws. You don't guess them. They are there. You follow them or you keep rumbling up and down. Let me pray for you.
before I make the altar call. Or let me even make the altar call first. Please look up. I want to make the altar call. I'm very happy when I make altar calls. You know why altar calls are important? Altar calls are important because they give the people an opportunity to respond to God. There are people outside. There are people inside waiting right now for the man of God to just make a call and let them come. Because as you teach, the spirit of God is convicting people. There are two sets of people who should run out here right now. Many inside and outside. I spoke about ignoring certain laws. Could it be that this is what you have ignored? You have ignored Jesus. Trying to live a life outside him. You have ignored Jesus. He looks like one of those spiritual leaders to you. Tonight, if you will only make that adjustment and embrace him as your savior, that begins the beginning of a journey towards victory. And there are people who at one time were holding Jesus Christ very seriously. But at a point you felt other things were serious. And I'm not just talking of backsliding. You just left the whole thing tonight. There is room for you. These two people, I'll just count one to ten very quickly. You are here. You are outside. The spirit of God is talking to you. Don't argue. Make your way to the front. The Bible says if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Begin to celebrate them. They are coming. God bless you. God bless you. Many of them are coming inside and outside. The devil is a liar. Leave your seat and come. Forget about your friend. God bless you. Make your way to the front. Man of God, I'm tired of the way my life is. I don't want to pretend I'm making progress. Whereas I'm deceiving myself. Something you are ignoring may be responsible for the predicament in your life. Clear the way for them outside as they come. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Keep clapping, please, Koinonia. Some of us are still sitting. The moment the Holy Ghost starts talking to you and says you are the one the man of God is talking about, you can hear his voice. Leave your seat and make your way to the front. Young and old, say, I'm tired. I can't be the God of my life. I'm ready to hand over my life to one. Listen, you have to pray. I'd like you to leave your seat and come. Say, Lord, I managed my life by myself for 20 years and here's my conclusion I mismanaged it I need to hand it over to one who can manage my life for me make your way to the front join them quickly please join them quickly join them quickly there are still one or two people outside join them quickly let's sing that song Savior Savior He can move a mountain my God is to say he is mighty forever forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the place one more time sing savior savior he can move the mountain my God is mighty to say you are mighty I salute you for this great decision some of you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time listen there's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of when we're giving you an award you ask us to open our eyes there is nothing you have done there's no way you have lived that God will run away from you some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears you are standing face to face with destiny time never changes anything it's a decision and you are making a very serious decision don't make it an emotional decision. Please lift your right hand. Jesus is in this place and you are talking to him. Don't just think of someone in heaven. He's right here with us. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Those there, you can make sure you, you join, please. Lord Jesus, I ask you tonight to help me. I've heard your word and I'm tired of living my life my own way I come before you broken humbled by your word 
I make Jesus Lord of my life. Say it. I receive forgiveness of sins. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare from today that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of the world is broken over me. I break free from wrong associations that keep me in sin. From today, I move forward ever and backward never. My sins are forgiven. I am the righteousness of God. Help that lady under the anointing. I'm a new person in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for this once. I stretch my hands and I pray for you by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I pray you will never, never go back to the world again. The appetite for the flesh, the appetite for sin is broken in your life. And I pray that the Holy Ghost will take over your life in a very strange way. He will make you mighty in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, some of you will go back and delete all those junks from your phone. You will call some people and tell them, I love you, but this is the last time you will ever see me again. I've made a serious decision for Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Listen, let me just encourage you quickly before you go. It's not enough to get born again and go back to those wrong associations some of you know the people you have left it's important for you to be grafted into the house of god the bible says they that be planted in the house of god will flourish in the courts of our god you don't get born again and go back and those guys mock you and give you one week and still destroy you cut away from them when you see when you come to church you are serious with god you will join a workforce and have new friends new friends who love jesus and are serious Praise the Lord. I bless you in the name of Jesus. You will never go back to your old ways in Jesus' name. Sir, before they go, come. I don't know you, but the Lord is giving you a new beginning. Right? I'm seeing that there is a cause of darkness. There's deliverance happening to you from the time you came. Huh? There's been a lot of struggle in your life. There are things I cannot tell you now, but the Lord is changing your story forever. This is the greatest decision, not just going to a man of God to pray for you. When you surrender to Jesus Christ, some things will leave. They came with the old nature, so they will pack their load and go at once. I pray for you, the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. So please make sure that you are grafted in the house of God. May God bless all those who invited them in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to follow the lady waving her hands. She will have your details and I promise you will follow you up. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Be careful with those under the anointing. Just walk gently. Please let's lift our hands as I speak over our lives very quickly. Son of man, can these bones live? He said, only thou knowest. He said, prophesy. In the name of Jesus. It is important to speak. Words are powerful. They place something on your life. And it compels creation to respond to you a certain way. I want you to understand what is happening. You see, when you speak over people, you are not motivating them. It's like a spell you are casting on them. When it comes upon them, it compels their environment to respond to them in a certain way. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. A new dimension of favor. I speak it over your life. A new dimension of favor. Receive it in the name of Jesus. A new level of favor. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Everything you have struggled with from January to now, I declare within one week, within seven days, it must bow to the name of the Lord. I prophesy over your life between now and the seven days, between now and Friday, it must bow to the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, whoever is holding your breakthrough, I compel them to release it to you. Whoever is holding your breakthrough, I compel them to release it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every family represented here, that the devil is manipulating them. 
and causing the trouble at home to disturb your peace here i release angels to your homes to judge the hands of evil in the name of jesus christ i pray for you that grace that makes a man honorable like jabez may it come upon your life right now in the name of jesus christ it's too early for us to begin to struggle spiritually anyone struggling spiritually here dead prayer life dead word life no more fasting no praying no seriousness no listening to teachings i restore that passion right now in the name of the lord jesus christ i restore that passion right now everything that is dead in your hand comes alive now everything that is dead in your hands comes alive now in the name of jesus christ i don't know what has disappointed you from january till now but i changed that report in the name of jesus christ everything that should have happened in january and is yet to happen we manipulate time and we bring it into your future in the name of the lord jesus christ believe what i'm telling you in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for you from tonight as you open your bible it will be as if you've never read it before every verse you open up to will be mysteries upon mysteries in the name of jesus christ you are trusting god for specific messages and books to give you direction you will see them in dreams you will see those materials in your dreams in the name of jesus christ anyone being eyed here by the spirit of death i curse that spirit you have no grounds to affect anybody's life in the name of jesus christ give jesus thanks lift your hands and just honor him hallelujah dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Kete branda kata pa kotos koto breke teke ne kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.